All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Raul Cepeda. I'm with, uh, with Barcodes Inc. here. On behalf of Barcodes and Zebra, I'd like to thank you all for attending our webinar today on using hands-free technology to take mobility to the next level. Uh, we know your time's precious and we hope you gain some valuable insights today into our fulfillment edge and heads-up display solutions that we'll be going over. Uh, we do have a Q&A feature available on this webinar. So feel free to send us any questions along the way and we'll address them towards the end as time allows. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Andrew Pierce, uh, Zebra's uh, Senior Product Manager. Andrew. Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, thank you for attending today. Um, as mentioned, I am a Product Manager uh, with um, Zebra Technologies focused on warehouse solutions and I've been working on Fulfillment Edge and the HD4000, our head-up display, um, for several years now and, and we're excited that that was publicly released and announced um, at the end of 2019 um, and we're starting to get that rolled out um, at customer sites now um, and really uh, learning a lot um, about uh, the various operations. <clears throat> if we look at um, kind of where head up display and fulfillment edge um, came from, you know, there, this, this on demand economy has started placing a lot more demands on, on customers' warehouses. Um, you know, a lot of sites used to ship full pallet to a store. Um, you know, now they're having to open up a case and take one each out of that and ship it to a residential address potentially. Um, you know, omni-channel fulfillment. Um, so there's, you know, all of these challenges uh, ultimately mean there's more orders to fill. Um, you need to fill those in a much shorter period of time. Um, the customer expects that to be, um, you know, picked and shipped um, same day in as little as an hour. Um, but as a result, there's also many more returns coming back into the facility. Um, you know, a lot of people are ordering um, one of each size to see which one fits and return the rest and those types of things. And so there's a lot of challenges around dealing with that inflow um, of, of single packaged returns. Um, and then ultimately you end up having uh, more unique uh, products and items, um, which means more products coming into the facility, uh, more shipments to put away and track. And ultimately um, you have to do all this with um, labor challenges. Um, what we're finding is that there's labor shortages in the fulfillment space. Um, uh, turnover um, is, you know, averages probably somewhere around 30 to 35 percent annual turnover um, in picking and fulfillment use cases. Um, and, you know, getting, getting that labor trained um, and up to speed fast um, before they leave uh, is certainly a challenge. And so, we came out with Fulfillment Edge, um, the idea being that um, if, if, we, if we start with a clean slate, take a step back and reimagine what would um, picking um, and sortation use cases look like um, if I designed them today, um, understanding that I have an image in front of my eye with a head-up display and other wearable technologies um, such as, you know, Bluetooth ring scanners, wearable mobile devices, um, whether that's wrist mount and belt mounted, you know, as well as other technologies uh, like mobile printing, um, locationing solutions and such. And ultimately what, you know, we were able to do with Fulfillment Edge is really um, take your current WMS and really, you know, transform it um, into, uh, you know, a modern, um, experience um, that can bring a lot of productivity increases um, and a lot of other um, benefits around accuracy um, and getting the most out of um, you know that the, the picking labor um, that you have and ultimately one of the things that we come to with fulfillment edge is that um, you know, we're able to, if, if you provide a modern, um, in, you know, intuitive and interactive mobile application, um, you can eliminate, you know, 90% or more of that training and onboarding time. So most of our customers have a training and onboarding time of um, anywhere from four to six weeks. And that's taking someone from, you know, their first day starting in the warehouse to when they achieve 100% productivity 
um, and the accuracy targets that the customer has laid out. Um, so, you know, when you look at four to six weeks, um, uh, you know, a good number of those new hires won't even survive four to six weeks. And so you end up, you know, paying some of this labor um, for two to four weeks and not really getting much of a return. And so instead of measuring training reporting in weeks, um, with Fulfillment Edge and, and the HD 4000, we're measuring it in hours, um, you know, at most a day for someone to achieve um, the productivity goals um, and, and expectations, um, but doing so um, with other components um, such as accuracy um, being on, on par as well. Uh, and the other com like part that um, this impacts is uh, seasonal workers. Uh, so again, that on-demand economy means there's a lot of seasonality um, to, uh, you know, throughout the year. And some of our customers are, you know, doubling their, their workforce, um, you know, during particularly the fall, the fall season usually, um, and they're hiring them you know, four to six weeks before they actually need them simply because ultimately that's the duration it takes for them to be to become productive when they need it. Um, and with Fulfillment Edge, we're, we're, because we're eliminating that training and onboarding time, you know, we're able to uh, reduce the cost of that seasonal worker, hire them much closer to when you actually need them. And then when you do need them, they are more productive and more accurate um, than they would have uh, elsewhere. So ultimately, how does all this work? Um, Fulfillment Edge itself is a native Android client. Uh, it's a mobile client that runs on uh, Zebra Android devices. Um, and, you know, because it's running within uh, the Zebra portfolio, uh, it can leverage um, things such as, you know, all of our mobility DNA um, components, uh, peripherals, um, and other modalities that we offer. So, you know, adapting stuff like um, ring scanners and head mounted displays. Um, that's all really straightforward to uh, kind of bake that into Fulfillment Edge, um, which means that we can look at input modalities. You know, how do we get information into the client and control workflow? You know, that's where stuff like barcode printing, um, barcode scanning and printing, you know, voice input. Um, you know, Zebra has a, a very large portfolio of locationing and motion sensing technologies um, to understand, you know, where people are and can we show them relevant information based off of that as well as um, all of the RFID solutions that are available. Um, and so the Fulfillment Edge Android client is really focused on not necessarily choosing one of these um, modalities, but rather um, for the specific task at hand, you know, can we use the right modality um, for the, for uh, to achieve the most productivity of, of, of regarding that step. Um, that Android Fulfillment Edge client communicates and connects to um, a Fulfillment Edge server. Um, the server is required uh, simply because we do optimize a lot of the um, pick and sortation data um, for presentation to the user. Um, because we're presenting it in a very different way than what a typical warehouse workflow would look like, um, that server is able to consume that data, um, optimize it, execute it at the edge uh, with that mobile client, um, and then um, save that and, and pass that on to the WMS. And so the warehouse management system we do integrate into, um, we get you know, the, the contextual data that we need from that WMS, whether that be location item information, um, as well as obviously order and pick data. Um, and we basically return what ultimately happened. Um, so how was that executed? Um, by who? Those types of things. And so that we kind of stay uh, in lockstep with the warehouse management system. Um, in the end, Fulfillment Edge is not really the master data source. Um, you know, we continue to rely on the WMS to um, take that role and continue to do the things that it does really well. Um, but by integrating into it, we're able to really micromanage and optimize the mobile experience um, and ultimately improve uh, the overall um, workflow productivity and execution uh, and extend that without being forced or, or having to upgrade that WMS. Um, a lot of our customers, um, you know, run 
uh, legacy versions of those WMS. You know, many of them range from 2005, I think, is the oldest one we've worked with so far, and, and some of them are right up to, you know, 2020. Um, but if, you know, a lot of our customers that, that have been in the, you know, 2010 to 2015 range, um, an upgrade of that platform is seen as, you know, very costly and risky, um, but they need the ability to adopt some of these new technologies and improve productivity and ultimately fulfillment edge extends and augments that WMS um, without really impacting it um, and, and eliminate some of that cost and risk that they may feel they need to take on to be able to um, add these types of, of enhancements um, into the solution. Um, so, you know, we have been working closely with the WMS providers um, uh, on what that interface and, and extension looks like um, so that, um, you know, we can bring value to, you know, our joint customers um, in the best way possible. One other benefit that we get with running a native Android client is um, the ability to capture edge data um, and, and an analytics component. Um, you know, a lot of our customers have labor management solutions and, and can tell you, you know, who is running at 110% productivity and who's running at 60% productivity. Um, but in the end, very few of them can tell you why. Um, and the reason they can't tell you that is they just don't have the context and the insight into um, how work, um, how tasks are being executed um, based off the tool set that they're using today. And that tool set could be anything from paper-based processes right through to Telnet terminal emulation or web-based clients. Um, and what the native Android client brings us is the ability to capture all aspects of um, how that uh, operator uh, is going about um, their work. And so, you know, sim you know, pretty, pretty straightforward and simple questions, simply like, you know, did they use the on-screen keyboard or did they scan a barcode? Um, you know, what pick path did they take through the warehouse? Um, you know, were they using a head-up display or not? Um, what images were they showing on the head-up display? Like, can we replay a pick if, if there was an accuracy challenge? Can you actually look in to see what the operator was presented um, and what actions they executed um, to understand where the issue was with that accuracy um, challenge? Um, and what we're starting to do is feed a lot of this information um, kind of into a data lake on the Fulfillment Edge server. And that data can be shared with labor management or WMS or ERP solutions um, if they would be able to leverage it. Um, but if not, um, we're able to start, you know, analyzing and looking at that data um, and start making some data-driven decisions based off of what we're seeing. So Fulfillment Edge has a web-based supervisor console um, that does visualize uh, many aspects of the operation. Um, it does uh, predictions on when, you know, various work assignments and operators will be completed what they're working on. Um, and we're currently working on the ability to reassign labor um, where it needs to go um, the most, you know, based off of outstanding work um, and those types of things. And as that analytics channel evolves, um, you know, we're starting to see more and more opportunity um, to make better decisions and provide visibility um, to supervisors and, and warehouse managers um, so that they can start making operational improvements, um, maybe retraining methods, those types of things, um, uh, all based off of uh, this additional context that we can capture um, from the Fulfillment Edge client and feedback into um, the Fulfillment Edge uh, server. And so what does all this mean? Um, ultimately, what we've seen through all of our customer pilots and deployments to date is we've seen a trend um, so far of an average of about 24% productivity increase. Um, you know, productivity numbers are always a challenge simply because there's so many variations on what tool set and solution you're coming from and going to as well as the various workflows that you may be executing. Um, and so, you know, we've seen customers that have gained, you know, 15% and we've seen some that have gained 35 to 40%, um, depending on, you know, are they coming from a paper-based process or are they coming from 
um, you know, a, a standard you know, telnet or terminal emulation solution, those types of things. You know, and also impacts on whether you're doing each picking or case picking, you know, various sortation activities, um, those types of things can all impact that. But we have seen a very consistent trend to that average of 24%. Um, and we're starting to kind of harden that up um, more and more with, with more and more customer data that, um, and information that's coming in. Um, as I mentioned, training and onboarding time, um, we're eliminating over 90% of that uh, training and onboarding time. Typically what we're doing is showing somebody about a 30 second video um, of what Fulfillment Edge looks like and what the workflow looks like in action and then suiting them up and sending them out and they're basically able to start going um, and picking on their own almost immediately. Um, we, in one sortation use case, we did eliminate 99% um, of the training and onboarding time in kind of a repeatable proof of concept that we did with a customer. Um, and again, we can do all this um, without changing your WMS um, warehouse management system. Um, there's no real backend changes or disruptions there. Um, this can run alongside um, your existing solution. So it's not something where you have to um, kind of deploy all your pickers with Fulfillment Edge. It is something that you can kind of start with five or 10 pickers um, and understand you know, how it fits into the operation. Um, and so that you're not disrupting, um, you know, product being shipped because ultimately, you know, these are ringing the cash register um, ultimately for the customers when something is shipped, you know, that gets invoiced and, and that's uh, obviously mission critical to, to avoid any disruptions there. So I've, I've talked a lot about Fulfillment Edge um, and that mobile client and, and, and some of the productivity and optimizations it can bring um, to the kind of picking and sortation use cases. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, features and functionality of our head-up display. Um, the model number of that is the HD4000. Um, it is, uh, you know, an, an important part of Fulfillment Edge. We've seen a lot of benefits um, from a hands-free use case. Um, and what we're learning is that um, visual information um, is uh, very intuitive. Um, it's very easy to understand. Um, and that's kind of uh, obviously, uh, you know, completely hands-free. So you'll notice on the side of this um, uh, head-up display, there is a cable. Um, and so we do run a cable from the head-up display into a Zebra Android mobile device. Um, so right now we're supporting the WT6000, the wearable, um, as well as the TC5 platform and the TC7 platform. Um, and so that the plugs in this plugs into those devices via USB. Um, I think on the surface that sounds like a bit of a step backwards. Um, in technology, but what we learned when we built our first wireless prototype is that, you know, to make this enterprise ready um, and specifically in, in warehouse environments, you know, people needed to be able to wear it for a full shift, you know, eight to 10 hours. Um, and when, when we were fully wireless, um, we just weren't able to achieve that. And what we found is that um, the unit was too heavy um, and it was too hot. Um, for long-term wear. And so by putting that cable in there, um, what we're able to achieve is offloading the head of everything that doesn't need to be on the head. And so that means that there's no batteries on, on the head, there's no um, wireless you know, Wi-Fi communication um, and data transmission, there's no processing power. Um, and so what we've done by doing this is we've eliminated all the heat um, that comes with battery and battery charging. Um, and then we've eliminated all the weight that comes with all those other components and offloading that to the mobile device. And now we've been able to achieve, um, you know, that full shift use and wearability. Um, and uh, we're, we're also able to achieve a lot of flexibility around how it's adjusted and mounted. Um, so um, two main components to the HD4000 is a pair of safety glasses that it mounts to. Um, as well as the optic module itself. And so if you order the HD4000, it comes as you see it here uh, with a pair of glasses and, and the HUD uh, module, the HD4000 module to mount to it. Um, it slides into this T-bar mount on the safety glasses. Um, 
if you need that to support left eye, again, you can just slide it in from the other side. Uh, it takes, you know, five, five seconds to switch this from side to side. Um, supporting left and right eye is a critical component of this hardware. Um, I think about 80% of, of our users uh, to date have been right eye dominant, but you know, that leaves 20% that are left eye dominant and, and putting this in front of the dominant eye is critical for acceptance. Um, if someone's non-dominant eye can see this for long periods of time and their dominant eye cannot, um, you know, you could, you could actually start to see some negative human responses there around eye fatigue and eye strain. Um, so supporting left and right eye is critical, um, but then we also have this ball joint on top and it's almost like a rear view mirror in a car so that when you put this on, you can kind of grab that module, get it in position and, and off you go so that when you start your shift, um, it's very quick to, to adopt. Um, and, and set up for you. Um, and then, you know, we have a, the appropriate ruggedization, five foot drops to concrete. Um, and, you know, it, it's also fully sealed, IP67. Um, we didn't do that, that waterproof sealing um, <laughs> for a use case. Um, we don't see a lot of people with, with their face uh, <laughs> underwater um, in the use cases we've, we've worked with, but more, and this is a, a especially critical right now, um, given the current situation, is that's more from a, a cleaning and disinfecting perspective. Um, you know, Zebra's been in the wearable space for many, many years and really understand um, this, the, the hygiene component of it. And so ultimately, this entire module can be fully submerged in an alcohol-based cleaning solution, can be fully disinfected, and then the, the operators can have their own pair of glasses. Um, so that's a separate item that you can purchase um, on its own. Um, you know, much more inexpensive uh, personal item that can be purchased. People keep that item that can be cleaned in the same way, but it's their personal item. Anything that touches the face or the head um, is their own. And then the module is shared. And because it plugs into a mobile device, you know, that can be fully used in back-to-back -back shift environments simply because the battery can be uh, hot swapped in the mobile device um, that it's plugged into. So you don't need any additional charging infrastructure, um, anything like that in the environment. Um, also, because we're leveraging the mobile device for the application and the intelligence, um, you also don't have to get this on your wireless network. This isn't another um, you know, wireless uh, device that needs to be certified and managed. There's no software to manage on it. Um, and so from an ID, IT acceptance and adoption perspective, it really is just a simple accessory um, that gets put into the operation and doesn't really require any additional um, management setup, um, those types of things. A couple of the other kind of key features here, we do have a head tracker, nine, nine axis sensor. Um, that you know that accelerometer and, and tracker is able to ap applications can use that um, for various uh, things and i'll show you in a second some of the fulfillment edge workflows and where we're leveraging that that head tracker um, and then it also has a forward facing camera um, and that's kind of the circle here um, you don't have to order it with a camera um, there are many environments that would not allow that camera to be there um, so you can order the hd 4000 with or without a camera um, what we're seeing is if we look at um, the HD 4000 um, without uh, Fulfillment Edge, um, there's many other um, uh, customers, partners that are doing development with this technology for other use cases as well. Um, so, for example, um, right now uh, with the COVID situation, we've seen a large ask from customers um, for remote expert uh, see what I see type of use cases. Um, so, um, you know, you make a video call or, or some, you know, some other software solution that manages this. Someone at another facility or a central office can see what that person sees, you know, whether that's a maintenance, break, fix type of solution, um, those types of things. So you can, you know, people that are not allowed to travel anymore um, can still provide uh, expertise. Um, into certain remote situations uh, by leveraging that forward-facing camera. Um, and then the operator, uh, kind of the hands of the operation can see the other person uh, in the head-up display. So it, it's kind of a video call um, to help extend uh, that expertise out to um, remote areas. Um, there's a few other use cases floating around uh, for the HD 4000 in the camera as well. 
Um, we have a full software development kit and API set um, that uh, you can adapt and extend um, an application to leverage this. You know, again, because it, it's an accessory, um, you don't have to write an application specifically for it. Um, the only requirement is that it, it has to be an Android device and an Android application. Um, but if you have an existing Android application to extend it out to the HD 4000, um, again, it's a couple extra calls to output images to it um, as opposed to writing an application specifically for it. Um, so we've seen many applications adopt um, this technology within a matter of you know, days or weeks as opposed to writing an entire application for it. Um, so ultimately we feel we've brought the first truly enterprise device um, head up display to this space. Um, you know, we've looked at the various um, requirements um, based off of our um, past history uh, in this space um, to make sure that we understand both from an IT perspective and an operational perspective what it takes um, to stand up and support, you know, a device like this in the environment. Um, the last thing I'll touch on quickly um, is really just focused on optic position. Um, what you will find is that this optic sits almost in front of the eye. Um, this is a see-through OLED display. Uh, and the reason we do that is, you know, some of the other devices on the market position the optic either above or below the eye, um, which if you're kind of snacking on the information or looking at it briefly, um, that there is really nothing wrong with that optic position. Um, if you are looking at a highly transactional environment and you're looking at this, um, you know, every five, you know, five to 10 seconds, um, the eye movement of looking up or down is actually very um, unnatural and, and uncomfortable. Um, and so by placing this in front of the eye, um, it has a, a perceived distance of about five to six feet from you. Um, so the brain doesn't have to really refocus or adjust to see it. Um, but it can reference, reference it with it being right in front of the eye without it causing any um, lost vision or kind of blind spots to the operator. I noticed um, there's a question here about some of the examples of, of workflows that Fulfillment Edge can provide. So um, I'll get into those. I'll use that as a bit of a segue here into um, some of the next, the next couple slides. Um, and, and these are examples of some of the workflows um, that Fulfillment Edge is filling today, um, but um, certainly not limited to these. Um, so, you know, one of the uh, larger interest areas we've seen um, is from customers either running Pictolite or exploring adding Pictolite to their environments. Um, you know, Pictolite is a great solution. Um, it's not going to get much easier than putting a light in front of a location that you have to go and pick to. Um, the feedback we're getting, um, the two major areas that our customers are exploring alternatives is really because of cost, um, with Pictolite really being expensive, not just to install, but to maintain. And also just the infrastructure and static nature of putting that, that in um, and the lack of flexibility. And so what Fulfillment Edge can bring and, and the, the screenshots you see on the right side of this slide um, kind of highlight what an operator would see. Um, and so um, on the right side of each image is what the HUD image is and, and, uh, and what the operator would see in front of the eye. Um, anything that you see that's black is actually see-through. Um, so don't think they're walking around with a big black screen in front of their eye. Um, it is a translucent see-through image and, and because it's an OLED, black is basically um, not, not there. Um, and so what you'll see here is the operators are given visual guidance on where to go. Um, you know, whether that is, um, uh, you know, a, a different aisle, um, those types of things. Um, and, uh, and ultimately, you know, you're given um, going to an aisle, um, go, go to a pick facing. When you get there, you scan, um, you get a, a virtual layout of the pick rack that you're looking at. Um, when you scan the right location with that barcode scanner, um, you get a green indicator. Um, you turn around to pick to your totes and um, you get the quantities that you distribute to the totes. And so ultimately, um, 
when you, when we're changing screens, we're using that head tracker. Um, and so, you know, ultimately, um, again, we're leveraging sensors and inputs to help control workflow to keep it completely hands-free, which is really critical. Um, and, and looking at those various inputs and outputs um, to optimize the overall flow. Um, similarly, we have uh, sortation, um, you know, bulk pick, um, sortation, um, and, and shipment sortation. And ultimately, um, you know, packages coming down a conveyor or bulk, bulk pick sortation into a put wall, you know, similar and same benefits as well. Um, so you get visual representation and layout of where those packages need to go um, and update accordingly. Um, and so operators can put this on and just kind of know what to do. Um, and you'll notice that we're using really simple coloring. Um, you know, green is good, red is bad. Um, you know, yellow is work and, and operators can kind of um, uh, just put this on and know what to do. Um, and with the barcode scanning, it's really accurate as well. Um, same benefits that we've seen elsewhere. Um, there is a quick question here on screen sharing and mirroring. Um, that is possible. Um, there is no engineering development required. Um, you can check a box on the mobile device and basically uh, mirror what's on the mobile device in front of, in front of the eye. Um, that's a great way to get started. There's obviously no development requirements there. Um, my only caution there is simply that um, what looks good on a mobile device might not look good in front of the eye. Um, so I would encourage to explore that as two separate screens, but from a starting point, um, yes, there is a checkbox that you can kind of do to do that. So, um, so that's, that's the sortation use case. Again, very visual, very intuitive, um, and very accurate with, with ring scanning, uh, with the ring scanners um, and other sensor inputs. Um, and, and kind of overall uh, pick and sortation use cases of Fulfillment Edge. So I will um, turn this back over uh, to um, Raul at this point. I, I don't know if there's any other questions um, uh, and um, that kind of thing. Um, there was uh, maybe one quick question about color blindness here. Um, that, that is a great question. Um, I'll go back a slide here. If you look at this uh, green check mark here, um, that was actually an update to the UI um, that we made. Um, in this slide, you'll see there's no symbols over top of the squares. Um, we did make a change to add a check mark and X if it's wrong and when it turns red and a plus sign if it's where you have to put it. Um, and so now we have uh, full support for colorblindness as well. Um, uh, you know, even if you are, are obviously unable to see what, what those colors are. So. so that's the overview of Fulfillment Edge and HD4000. Um, I don't see too many other questions. Not sure how we're doing on time here, Raul, but I'll, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thanks, Andrew. So uh, again, everybody, now that you've seen a, uh, had a chance to see the great technology that Zebra's built here, you might be asking yourself, you know, why, how does barcodes fit into everything? Well, you know, as one of Zebra's uh, top premier solution providers, um, you know, our entities are, are here to kind of design, deploy, and support uh, these types of solutions. Uh, we get them implemented, and then more importantly, we keep them maintained for you. Uh, so you can see there on the slide, basically, uh, we can offer around the clock support if needed for all your deployed hardware. Uh, we do have developers on staff that are very familiar with all the OS platforms, and we can actually help you integrate these types of solutions into your existing WMS uh, or ERP systems. Uh, and then lastly, we have a professional services staff that can help stage, kit, configure, triage, and repair all your hardware, uh, including uh, managing all your different mobile devices that are deployed. Uh, with the hosted mobile device management software. So at the end of the day, you know, our goal is to partner with you uh, to get you um, up and running and more importantly, to keep you up and running with future-proof technologies like Fulfillment Edge uh, and the HD4000. Um, so I don't see uh, any additional questions. If you can go to the next slide here, Andrew. Um, you know, again, we, I know we went a little bit over. So again, uh, on behalf of Barcodes and Zebra, uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining our webinar today on using hands-free technology to take mobility to the next level. If you have any further questions uh, or would like one of our WMS experts to reach out for a free consultation or demo, 
uh, feel free to reach out to your preferred solution provider uh, that you see on the screen. Uh, these are all authorized um, premier solution providers of Zebra Technologies. Uh, or you can feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, again, my name's Raul and my contact info is uh, so thanks again, everybody, for joining, uh, and I hope you all have a, a great day.